students welcome back to the new video okay we are going to start with the term colonial what is colonial so let's begin with the term colonial we had seen in the previous video that james mill had offered about the hindu muslim and the britishers periodization and our indian historians had mentioned about ancient medieval and modern period but now here what in detail we are going to study let's see british came in india conquered local nawabs and rajas established their rule okay our muslim rulers who were ruling in india okay they had offered the other people from the foreign countries to come here and do business with india so when they had come they had come with the tag trading but when they came here it was totally different they started conquering or winning over they conquered local nawabs and rajas so britishers came in india and they conquered over nawabs and rajas they started subjugating the locals they started subjugating the locals established control over economy and society they brought changes in values taste custom and practices as britishers came in they brought in lot of changes in the indian food style okay the attire what they put so everything got changed the subjugation over the locals establishing control over the money okay and the change what they brought in that changed our people forcefully it was not by their wish but it became forced nowadays we wish to wear okay the attire with western attire and all and the food items we can say that they colonized india the subjugation of one country by another leading to political economical social and cultural change this process is known as colonization administration produces records okay how do we know about the past uh, history of 250 years okay if i ask you you are just 13 or 14 years if i tell you you know about the history uh, before 10 years or you know something uh, happened in the family you will say yes before 10 years obviously you will know if i say before 50 years then you might ask your parents before 100 years then you will ask your grandparents but if i ask about 250 years then where will you get all this recordings or anything you can get all these things from the documents or the books which are written original uh, work which is written by the scribes or the calligraphist that material could be read and then you could know about the past history same way the historians who were there they must have got all these things from the archives and from the archives they must have got the books they must have read gone through an original book will be one and scribes have copied how we have one material and we copy it make it 100 200 300 copies same way in the earlier time also there was one original book which was copied by the scribes and this book the historians had to go through when they went through this all books they came to know about in detail what had happened in the past and then they wrote about the history official records of the british administration it offers the official records of the british administration how did the british administer what was the different policies what they had brought in all in detail was been mentioned every instruction plan policy decision agreement investigation everything clearly had to be written up in earlier times we didn't had the printing culture printing 
thing. So there were people who were calligraphists, who used to write down all the material. When they write this type of materials, that becomes a source for the historians to know in detail. Every instruction, if a person instruct, a Britisher instructing or an officer you can say, plan which they made, everything had to be written clearly in the books. May it be policy, decisions which they take, agreement between two partners, investigation, somebody has robbed somebody or something like that. So everything in detail had to be written up. All important documents, letters would be clearly preserved. This all documents and letters which are there that needed to be properly preserved. Why we need to preserve? So that it becomes source for the other historians who can write about the history in the coming period. Record rooms. Now all I, in the previous slide when I spoke about all the written work, all the written work, the record rooms were attached to all administrative institution, specialized institutions like archives and museums were also there to preserve important records. Each and every department had a record room, may it be a police station, may it be an administrative or may it be a collectorate place, each and every place had a record room and that record room had all the details to be written up. You had the archives where all the documents, books, letters, everything was preserved. Museums where the artifacts and all the things were been kept. Letters and memos of various branches were also preserved. Reports and instructions. Letters may be a Britisher who had written letter to foreign country to his wife that they must have not taken which has been preserved. So that becomes an important document for our people, our historians. These documents were carefully copied and beautifully written by calligraphists. With the spread of printing, multiple copies of this records were printed. So earlier we had the calligraphist who used to write in detail all these things because we didn't had any printing machine. Later on when printing machine came, that is the time the multiple copies started happening. Okay, now this is clear to you, right children? Okay, you can see here this two picture, National Archive of India where all the preservation of documents, books, letters and all the things is kept. Then you have an official record. You can see it's 39, 1939, an official record which has been preserved and kept. And you can see this stamp also which is put over there. So hope you have understood with this topic. We'll meet in the next video. Till then, bye.